now read a second time. Engineer Lee Biwa. <coughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, <clears throat> we need to take a strong stance on global warming. We cannot afford to leave it to future generations to worry about. I'm glad to hear that we are both planning for climate change and rising sea levels and doing our best to use resources sustainably. The Zero Waste Master Plan launched last week highlights that we want to cut waste sent to landfill by 30%. This is a worthwhile goal, but a very big one. We will all need to pull together to achieve it. I often hear Singaporeans say, but we are such a small country. How can we make a difference? Indeed, our carbon footprint is comparatively low compared to other larger countries. Our global emissions amounts to about 0.1%. But these efforts can put us as world leader in international stage and hope we can inspire others to do their part. Actions from everyone add up. If everybody thinks tackling climate change is someone else's responsibility, then who will take responsibility? This resource sustainability bill, which aims to improve waste management in Singapore and support businesses to reduce and recycle their waste, is a step in the right direction. The bill does well to hold key producers of various types of waste accountable for waste management and reduction. I would like to ask, when businesses report how they were cut down on excessive packaging, do they have to meet a certain target? What were the targets set? How will they be monitored? If companies don't meet the targets, what penalties will be imposed? We need ambitious targets to ensure that companies take this seriously but at the same time, it should not be too onerous. Companies should not be unduly overpressurized by this requirement. <coughs> After all, doing business nowadays is not easy. At the same time, government also needs to simplify reporting as much as possible and train companies accordingly. Will the new requirements raise the prices of goods? This is my concern. Some eateries, hawker centres and fast food restaurants, for example, provide single-use plastic spoons and forks for customers having their meals on site. Are these single-use items regulated as packaging? If not, that could become a loophole in the law. Next, if Minister can explain more on electrical and electronic waste. Given the expected increase in volume of e-waste, can our current e-waste recycling capability <coughs> cope? What are the plans to grow this capability? Next, on food waste, it concerns me that building managers will have difficulties implementing segregation and treating of food waste on site especially if occupiers of the prescribed buildings do not cooperate. This would be just like our HDB recycling bins, where just one uncooperative person can contaminate the whole bin. <coughs> can the minister elaborate how massive is this exercise? How many buildings will fall within this category? How many NEA-operated hawker centres have such facilities at the moment? How would food prices at hawker centres, coffee shops, schools, etc. be affected? Are there local commercial buildings that have already adopted the practice of segregating and or treating food waste on site? What are their challenges? 
the results and benefits. The law is mainly focused on businesses, but individual actions will make a difference too. What I hope to see is this message trickling down to individuals. Nothing is too small or too little to combat climate change for our next generation. And on this note, I would like to take this opportunity to once again call for a charge of plastic bags. The impact may be insignificant, as SMS alluded in her reply to my PQ recently. But I strongly believe that such gesture will make people more conscious of what they do, how many plastic bags that they need, and such consciousness will have knock-on effect on their daily life and the consumption pattern. Certainly, we must stop consuming more than what we need. Reduce, reduce, recycle must be the norm of our society. Fighting climate change should not be just a job of the government, but everyone has a role to play. And we have to do this seriously for the survival of a country and for our next generation. I have mentioned recycling bins. Can we please do more to get all residents to use recycling bins appropriately? Are there plans to improve the heartland recycling network? Also, many depends on the Karanguni men to dispose of our unwanted items. How will this new bill impact on their trade? Another facet of our life is the PMDs. How are people to dispose of their PMDs? With UL2272 certified e-scooters come into effect next July, at least 80,000 PMDs will be disposed of in the coming year. Can Minister give some guidance in these areas? How will this be done? Domestic helpers and foreign workers play a big role at home and at work when it comes to waste management. What is the ministry doing to reach out to these groups? Sir, in Chinese, please. Bahu di qiu, ren ren you ze. Zhe xiang fa an gui ding, da gong shi, bi xu gao su dang ju, ta men shi yong duo sao, yi ci xing bao zhuang, yi ji jiang ru he jian sao bao zhuang, 我们的确需要严格对待，但同时也要小心新条例带来物价上涨的可能性。法案也规定，处于必须在特殊机器中处理。请问我们是否准备好迎合这项条例？各个旧小贩中心、学校、军营等将如何应付？ 他们该如何训练大厦租户进行处理？不要好像主务区的回收桶一样，总会有人不当使用一颗老鼠屎坏了一锅粥，导致所有的物品都不能再循环。此外，新条例是否会影响食物的售价？说到主务区的回收。新条例将如何影响卡朗古里曼？他们会不会集体失业？还有许多人现在要换符合UL227的BMD。请问BMD该如何处理才对？无论是在商业场所或家里，处理垃圾的还包括女佣和外劳。当局有没有计划教育他们如何应对新条例? Sir, I support this bill and I trust that the Minister will continue to push on with more efforts to promote sustainability. Thank you.